We set off to build the expedition vehicle of my dreams from the ground up with a $30,000 budget. We documented every aspect of the build from the design process to all the hardships along the way. To be honest, this was one of the most challenging projects of my entire life, but the final product exceeded my wildest dreams. Watch as we build an incredible vehicle for season three of the Tiny Home Adventure series. This is the Muse Roamer Project. On the previous episode, we finished building the panels and attached them to the side and rear of the inner steel frame with through bolts. After getting everything attached, Gary spent some time teaching Ashley how to use an impact driver. She's come a long way from not knowing what a 2x4 was. I did it! Awesome. Boom, nice, good job. Good job. Once she got the hang of things, she installed some metal brackets to help increase the strength between panels. We started to fill all the holes with Bondo and fiberglass the seams. After spending 11 days with Gary, it was time to say goodbye. To be honest, it was pretty heavy emotionally having him around after 20 years of not knowing why he left my sister and I. It was hard to hear his stories as nothing in the world would ever keep me from being a meaningful part of my future children's lives. We still have a long way to go, but I'm glad I had the opportunity to spend a little time together. After Gary left, it was right back to Bondo, fiberglass, sanding, and figuring out what to do with the corners. So we realized while fiberglassing that the fiberglass resin eats away at the foam. So Ashley is painting the foam right now with some latex primer. Um, we're gonna do that over here as well so we can lay our um, fiberglass and resin over this without this whole thing disintegrating. All right, so Josh just got the roof structural members in. Um, we're gonna just do HDO on top of these and insulate from the bottom. Honestly, next time I would use HDO for these corners, but Gary had cut them before he left and they fit really easy. So this thing is properly terrifying and dangerous. I'm using a router with a three inch bit to cut the panels, which required two passes to get through everything. So today we're cutting the last of the panels, hopefully. Um, I had to rent the big saw again. I'm the only one here, so I'm gonna be using it by myself. Uh, dude, it's been a week of scary tools. This is crazy, but uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. After all that, I cut it wrong. pissed oh after all that I messed up switching that to a 45 drastically changes the distance on the guard to the blade and that's what I've been using as my reference reference point lesson learned kind of sucks though because it's expensive these panels are expensive they're not super quick to make so now I need to go to Home Depot and grab some crap and spend some more money one thing I always dreamt of as a kid was having a dog that would just follow me anywhere off leash. Kicker is definitely that dog. So that one mistake probably cost me over $100 at least three hours of time. And it's funny, I was like all confident earlier talking about how I'm a craftsman now, I'm really figuring it out. And then one mismeasurement cost me way too much. So this whole process is super humbling. It's a miracle, the height of my career right here, this panel. Now we need to add a little bit of metal and attach these panels today. Ew. Woo! Sight. This came together nice. This was definitely the most 
challenging cut I've ever had to make to make these things all together nice and perfect, but did it. Yeah. All right, so we've got the front and the top of the chamfer or the over cab pieces on. Now we're cutting the chamfers, marks, doing some magician magic with some angles. I'm not really sure he's doing a great job, Doesn't but. Doesn't always go to plan. Yeah! We got a bet! We celebrated our victory with lunch on the Camp Chef as winter is right around the corner. So today we are doing basically nine tenths of the fiberglassing that we need to get done. We bought some respirators because I was super tired of inhaling all of the fumes from the polyester resin. Kicker, you need to go hang out outside for a while. I'm really hoping that this is the worst day of the build. Um, we have to sand all of the fiberglass down and put another coat on. I'm gonna have to wear a Tyvek suit and a respirator. And yeah, basically I want to blend all these seams. You can kind of see it. It, it. It's not perfect, but when it's done, it will be. Um, let's do it. Quick heads up, if blood and needles make you uncomfortable, you may want to fast forward 60 seconds. So I was just at the shop and unfortunately, I, uh, I kind of blew it and I cut my wrist with a orbital sander. Um, so now I'm gonna go get some stitches. I only had stitches once before, I'm kind of scared. Hope I don't pass out. Throw it out, one, two, three. So. <laughs> oh. uh, that sucks. You're doing great. Keep breathing, keep breathing. That's actually not that bad. I'm just okay. I'm trying to go really slow for it. Nice, nailed it. Nailed it, yeah. I just managed to drop the GoPro on the table. <laughs> it wasn't good. All right. There it is. Seven stitches. Didn't go so bad. I think we'll be all right. All right, so I made it back to the shop. I took yesterday off. My arm was super, super sore after getting those stitches. Um, I was using the orbital sander somehow. I somehow managed to hit myself in the arm as I was moving up around on the roof here and uh, take a huge chunk out. I mean, who knew that an orbital sander with 60 grit sandpaper could give you seven stitches in like a deep, one of the deepest cuts I've ever had. <laughs> I think someone started to go a little stir crazy from being stuck in the shop. The next day. So yesterday we showed up. I had Ashley mixing me this uh, bondo that we're using for the chamfers to make everything super perfect. We put it over the, you know, we fiberglassed over the foam, and then we're putting this bondo over the fiberglass. Anyways, Ashley didn't add enough bondo hardener to the material, so it's still soft, and I don't think it's ever gonna harden. Meaning which is partially my fault. I was supposed to show her how to do it properly. And apparently there, were, I, I left out some information. So now it's looking like I might have to take everything out, including the foam chamfers, the fiberglass, everything, which puts us back at least a week, if not more, um, as far as progress goes on this project. So. Try not to freak out and figure out a solution. But right now, I want to fucking cry. Honestly. All right, so today we are fixing all of the Bondo that didn't harden. We tried to scrape everything off that we could, sand it down. And uh, I've got my buddy George crushing it. 
the day has come. We're gonna cut out the door. We got the door after a bunch of nonsense, back and forth, the wrong door showed up the first time. And uh, yeah, it was just a, a hassle to get, but we've got the door. Now we need to cut some permanent holes in this thing. I can't tell you how freaking nerve wracking this is. Like we need to nail this the first time. If we cut it too big, like all this work could be for nothing. We started super small in the cutout as I was terrified to mess anything up. And then the camera died before we cut out the major pieces of the door. Woo! Kick your dog, come here. Get in here. Get in here. Come on, buddy. Yeah, good boy. Woohoo! That fit as tight as I could ever dream of. When you're, have, when you're having to sh shave a 16th of an inch off. Yeah. Woo! Woo dog! Nailed it, dude. Man, measure, measure 30 times, cut once. We cut out a frame to fit our router in so we can cut out the windows. Hey! Okay. I didn't see you there. We have a window. Alright. It's the moment of truth. Woo! Like a glove! Beautiful. More Bondo and sanding. All right, so we're about to cut the roof vent in. Just scary cutting a hole in this roof. It's been a long time to get everything sealed and fiberglass and Bondo, but it all looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, there's no time like the present, so. I think it's about time this little work truck gets an upgrade. We brought the truck to the capable hands at Oakley Off-Road to convert from a dually to a single rear wheel, lift and upgrade the suspension, and accommodate 41-inch Continental tires. We've got the front fenders on. We had to cut out some of the material of the truck to accommodate these, but uh, this will make it so we can put these big-ass tires on here. Rear end almost finished. So the dudes at Oakley absolutely crushed it today. These guys are super talented, super hard working. We've got the lift on, the tires on. All we need to do is finish the bumper. What do you think, Ashley? It's awesome. I'm really excited to see it all done. Kicker doesn't seem as impressed. <laughs> oh. Are you ready to party, buddy? Oh, yeah. Good boy. Look at this thing. Now we just need to finish the back box and uh, we'll be on the road. Well, that wraps up episode two of the Muse Roamer project. Next time, things really start to come together. We create Shisugi Bond for the ceiling, install our lights and water tanks, prime the inside, build our mounting knuckles, build and install some cabinets, we bulletproof our motor, and the shell gets mounted to the truck. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to keep up with our most recent adventures, make sure to follow us on Instagram. Massive thank you to the friends and brands who made this dream possible. If you have any questions, we would love to answer them. If you found this at all entertaining or informative, we would love it if you could please share and subscribe. Next episode drops Sunday. Thanks for watching.